You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul reminds us that the term person is the translation of persona, which is mask in Latin, which is the translation of prosopon in Greek, which also means mask, in both cases, the mask worn by actors in the theater. I am delighted to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. At Joseph, in 37 verse 2, subsumes the story of the Toledot of Jacob. Now, in Matthew, I found something very interesting that goes hand in hand with the comments just I made. In that, in the genealogy, of Jesus in Matthew, in verse 2, chapter 1, verse 2, we hear, And Jacob was the father of Judah, or begat, Judah and his brothers. Notice, the main name is Judah. It's not Reuben. Judah is very important. It's because King David was from Judah. And that's the idea. Notice the opening of the Gospel of Matthew. It says, this is the book of the Genesis in Greek of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. But let's go to the end of the genealogy. We have a magisterial twist. We hear at the end of 15, And Mathan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. To your ear, Joseph takes the place of Judah. Okay, very powerful. And if you go back to Mathan, which is the Aramaic or Semitic rendition of Matthew, then you guess what's happening here. It is that Mathan, Matthew, who is producing the story of Jesus. And here it is Joseph who is the son of Jacob. Now, I know what the people say, but this is not the same Jacob, that one and this one, and we have covered that time and again. Jacob is Jacob is Jacob is Jacob. That's the trouble among the Christians, except perhaps for the Greeks, who have Yaakovos. They know they know that Yaakovos in the New Testament is Yaakovos. But the fancy Europeans make him James in English and Jacques in French. That's absolutely silly the way they do with Jude, which in the original Hebrew is Judas, Iuda. Suddenly it becomes Jude and Jude in French, so that they give the impression that we're talking about the different person. There are no persons, friends. Remember, person is the translation of persona, which is mask, in Latin, which is the translation of prosopon, Greek, which means mask, and in both cases, it is the mask that the actors wore in those times before we hit the time when people would put paint and so on and change the face. Okay? So, You have to be very careful of not saying uh, Don Corleone 
is Marlon Brando. No, in the movie, Marlon Brando is Don Corleone, period. Because you can change the actor. Lately, I have learned. You see how I open my ears to things that interest the 20th century human being? And people are always amazed. How do I know that in the series The Crown, at one point there was a change of actress? What do you do with that? It's not the same. It's still Elizabeth. And you have to settle for that. Anyway, I think it's enough. Otherwise, lots of my hearers will stop listening to me and my friends Mark and Richard will be upset so we can't afford that. So, that's what we have. And I mentioned earlier about the dreams. They start in Canaan, they continue, and then at the end of the story, they are interconnected. So if you like, Joseph is functioning on behalf of God through the dreams, which means that ultimately he answers to him and not to Pharaoh, although Pharaoh thought that he was answering to him. Because the plan of saving Egypt from famine was devised by Joseph, not by Pharaoh. Okay, I mentioned about the bones, but let me read them to you. In Genesis 50, the last verses, 22 through 26, so Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house, and Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. Notice, he and his father's house. He is the main personality. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were born upon Joseph's knees. You see how the author is extending his reality and his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob. And thus he introduces Moses, who is the main personality of Exodus, which starts immediately after these verses. Then Joseph took an oath of the sons of Israel, saying, God will visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being a hundred and ten years old, and they emboldened him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. And this coffin, it's troublesome, this English translation. Coffin, ark, basket, and they play games. Coffin is Aaron which is the same word that is used about the box, which is called later the Ark of the Covenant. Remember my comment in English, the Ark of Noah, which is Teba in Hebrew, is Aaron in Exodus, but in English it's Ark and Ark. But the basket of Moses is Teba in Hebrew, which is the same word as the boat of Noah. And this connection is completely lost outside the original. Then in Exodus 13, verse 19, And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had solemnly sworn the people of Israel, saying, God will visit you, then you must carry my bones with you from here. You see how the text itself, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, if the author on purpose repeats, it means it's a very important point. And then at the end of Joshua, let me read you the entire text, because 
it links Joseph with other people important in the story of Exodus. Joshua 24, 30 to 33, And they buried him in his own inheritance at Timnat Serah, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, north of the mountain of Gash. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua and had known all the work which the Lord did of his, for Israel. Then you have a mention of Joseph. Later I shall show you how Joseph and Joshua are linked through a word used in Genesis regarding Joseph and in Joshua chapter 1 regarding Joshua. The bones of Joseph which the people of Israel brought up from Egypt were buried at Shechem in the portion of ground which Jacob bought from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of money. You remember that we discussed it earlier. It became an inheritance of the descendants of Joseph. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, died, and they buried him at Gibeah, the town of Phinehas, his son, which had been given him in the hill country of Ephraim. Again here, we have the indirect mention of Aaron through his son Eleazar. Okay, this being said, as an overarching series of comments regarding Joseph in Egypt, we move to Genesis chapter 38, where, as I indicated, it sounds a little bit strange. You have in 37 the Toledot of Jacob, and then you have Joseph. Then the story of Joseph continues in chapter 38. So what is the function of 37? Except to dismiss in your mind the importance of Judah as central to the plan of God. Or if you like, he works negatively in the story of the plan of God. The one who works positively is Joseph. Again, let's remember, you don't have the story of Judah, then the story of Joseph. You have the beginning of the story of Joseph, then the story of Judah, then you go back to Joseph. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.